I want you to spell it out clearly that in the case that a man passes on and there is no will, the properties and whatever it is belongs to the woman is automatically transferred to the family. And in cases where there are still people who are pushing against that, what can be done? Because now that you know that automatically it's supposed to be for you, even if all the properties of the man are in his name, he's now gone. So it's supposed to be for you. That's one aspect of it. Secondly, in the case of polygamous marriages, because this is one of the things you have people who had more than one wife who had step what uh you know step siblings and all of that stuff so the complicated issues how can we go about it legally because you need to be armed with the right information before you proceed to fight for your right oh well to close that um uh, the debate on the customary law. There is a repugnancy doctrine which uh, prescribes that the courts shall not enforce any customary law or rule if it is contrary to public policy, uh, repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. So um, the law has taken care of those uh, crazy. Uh, customs mm -hmm. you have to go and sleep in the evil forest you have to shave your hair you have to drink of this water you have to go to this shrine to swear you have to strip her naked you, have, you know all that have gone and one thing you have to understand is that you see all these are just against women yeah. that is to show you that most customs and traditions are patriarchal mm -hmm. they embolden men so mm -hmm. for it to be patriarchal shows that it was men that made those laws and the truth is women enable it yes women you see women are the problem of women it's just a universal law sorry it's not even a law it's just a fact mm -hmm. women are the problems of the women because the men will be there you see the women are the ones that propagate and you know until they become victims they are the ones that shout the most to propagate the culture. It are uh, not in our tradition. You bring a woman home, say, no, we can't marry from... Even the man is quiet. It is the women that would keep repeating custom against their own selves. Anyway, yeah. to the question of... Um, yes, uh, the property is passing on. Who does it pass? Yes. Yeah. Um, the Chief Justice of Ohio State, you know, in one of his rulings in a particular case like that, uh, says a matrimonial home is the joint property of both husband and wife. That okay. so once, whether it is in the man's name or the woman's name, at the passing of one, it automatically is transferred to the surviving spouse for the children, especially when they have children. The children are the main major beneficiaries. Um, in some cultures, the woman will be given right to use and to occupy, but ownership of the property will not be given to her because, you know, she might go and marry another man. And then the complications that may arise, is it that that man will now come and claim this property? So they would say that you can use and occupy, but the property in its uh, title is for the children. Mm. So if she goes to marry another man, she doesn't go with the title of the house, it stays with the children. Is it just the house or any property? Any property. Oh, that's interesting. So it gives precedent or gives priority to the children? Yes, yes. Oh. So the children are the primary beneficiaries of, you know, when you're talking about inheritance, <laughs> it is children you're talking about, as in, that's the first thing that comes to your mind. Uh, not the spouse, you know, the spouse will not inherit property, it's usually for the children. So what happens in a polygamous case? Well, the, what... <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a big one. Polygamy, I, I, I think, first thing I tell people is that polygamy is for rich people. <laughs> if you are poor, you are living in one room or one bungalow and you have three wives i think that the consequence of that decision is to punish the children that would be uh, fruits of that marriage because the confusion now there's a way the yorubas have designed you know it's called idigi 
E Igi is tree. tree. Igi. So it means that property will be shared according to wives and not children. According to wives. Yes. So if I may have two wives now and mm -hmm. something happens to me, you know, one wife could have six children, the other could have two. So instead of dividing house into, you know, one to six plus two, that's eight, then plus wife nine plus wife two, that's ten. No, you just divide it according to wives. So then whatever gets to wife A will be now it will now be shared amongst the children. Mm -hmm. There's a gentleman on my street, he has forty-eight children. Currently. You know, yes, he's late now. And um, you know, uh you know what it is to have forty-eight birthdays in one year? I doubt you. That's more than a month. A month has thirty-one days. So anyway, let me the issue was the man, you know, when the man just had a stroke, the children had already started selling, you know, so the man uh, on every house, he had about two houses on the street, you just see this house is not for sale, beware of my son, the maker, you know, <laughs> this house is not for sale, you know, the, you, in the absence of a will, it has to be settled in court, which would now share the properties as per wives. It is not possible to share as per 48 children. How do you want to share property into 48 pieces? Everybody takes a room. In, in what house? <laughs> does the house have 48 rooms? In a number of uh -huh. So a lot of times they do also another thing, which is to sell the property and not split the money. Hmm. Wow. Now, for someone, for a woman who's looking to uh, pursue her rights in the court and she's well aware that, okay, so I'm painting a typical scenario that the husband passed on, there was a will. It says this thing's supposed to, or these things are supposed to go to you, but the family is not releasing it because we've seen many cases like that. And she's gone to court. You see, this is what I would tell people. I'm not speaking as a lawyer now. I'm speaking as a citizen of this country. So my law degree aside. <laughs> hmm. We are all, I think if you are a Nigerian born in this economy, born in this space, we all have mental health issues. You can't be living under the conditions that we are living in and it will not affect you slightly. So the difference is that we're handling it differently. We are learning to cope, we are learning to, but we are all at the brink. What will make people stow away in the shaft of a ship, the person has got to be crazy. Hmm. So, um, I would tell you that when you know your right, you can enforce your right. I will not be in the house and some people will bring a truck and some houses to come and start packing my father's property. You no know, chairs, the TV, the air conditioning, and I am in the house. And he left a will which already has made me hair. You will resist that. Mm. Firstly, then call the police. But some people, I remember something like that happened to, to us and um, not that they came to, but, you know, the will did not pass. The, the, it was as if, you know, the executors of the will had another plan. Yes. So the title did not come. They held on to it. When it got to a time, this was 11, about 12 years after my father had passed, and they had not, they were still collecting some rent from the poor and I had not given it to the, I was over 40. I just, I was, yeah, I was 40. And my dad had died when I was like 30 something. So one day I just went to the property and I, you know, when they saw me, a lot of people that know my dad was like, ah, I'm Babani, you know, because the way I talk, the way I, and I told them that, where are you paying uh, rent? And they said, the chief, I said, yeah, this is from now on. You pay rent to nobody, you pay rent to me. Anybody that does not 
you'll be ejected from this. And you were like, ah, but we just paid rent. I said, you better go and collect it back. Huh. You know, you have to change it. And, you know, I wasn't talking like I'm talking. No. And of course, you know that there was some. And I stood there ready to shut down, you know, within 24 to 48 hours. When they heard, and I, when they called, and I told the, all the executors, the both that were calling that, eh, you have to do things in line with tradition. This is not the way to do it. I said, I dare you to come to this property. I dare you that I'm now here. I am living here. The day I see, you know, I changed it. And do you know that for that audacity, they were like, ah, this boy must be, he, something is backing him up for him to challenge and you know i i went all crazy you know in 48 hours they remitted the monies that they collected that year to me <laughs> there comes a time when you have to stand by the time you rush to the police and come back damage could have been done so you stand if you can raise alarm call people on the streets you know they would come to your aid but some people just I, I saw a place where the widow in the compound, the brothers, the, the, the brothers came and they pulled her out. She was sleeping, so she wasn't properly covered. You know, they pulled her out. They told her to get out of the house. And, you know, people on the streets too. And this woman did not do any. The son did not do it. They were just like, ah, you know, uh, they have jazz. You know, these people are fetish. Let them just take. By the time they stripped the house, they had also taken title documents. They had. And I was telling the woman, you cannot just sit and watch people plunder your goods. The neighbors couldn't do anything because the woman was not doing anything. <laughs> So, you know, you have to put some kind of, especially when you have a will, people will test you as long as you allow them to test you. But there's a Yoba proverb that says, that means the day you say enough is enough, that is the day 